Hey friends, welcome back to the Samurai version 3 tutorial and today we are shaping the legs. Now as you can see I've already done one on one side so just like the last tutorial I can use it as reference for what we're striving for with the other leg. Now you'll notice we um, shrunk the leg I guess or a lot of distance is lost about three units in length. Um, so we're going to be crimping and it's going to make the leg uh, shorter. Now one thing you want to keep in mind um, during this whole tutorial is not to make the leg too short. You want to try to spot out the proportions so that's about equal length for the limbs and you can use the rest as reference and if you make the legs too short or too long normally it's a pretty easy adjustment but um, just letting that out there as that's the main focus um, or main difficulty in this structure. But yeah let's dive into it. All right, so first off, we're going to turn this layer, which is one grid units, into two grid units. And that's also going to help us have a more even layer distribution. So uh, for starters, I'm going to take this flap and I'm going to spread squash this corner right here. Um, and we're going to use that as a detail for the foot, as well as help us um, get more even layer distribution, especially around the ankles. <clears throat> and now depending on what you want, you can actually keep going all the way up and it's going to provide a texture along the leg. I don't do that because I like it a little bit cleaner, but you can if you think that's a little bit more your style. Um, but for now, we're just going to do the very bottom one. And then at the top here, we're going to swivel this flap open and it's able to collapse down because of um, the battle dress over here that we did. Now it's going to be again kind of a free level shift where it's going to be a little bit of a diagonal up till about here. Um, so whatever grid length that is about there or whatever feels natural where it can lie down flat um, without any resistance then that's where you want to go to. Try not to make it too low um, so that you can kind of hide it out of the way, but um, whatever works on your model will be good. I'm actually gonna stick it up a grid unit like that. And what that's going to do is that's also gonna help us so that the legs aren't super too, are too close together. They'll be a little bit more spread out. All right, so now that we have this layer, we're going to take, we're actually, I'll just flip this to the back. We're going to take one pair of layers, so I guess two layers here, and we're just going to um, valley fold it to the other side so that it makes um, this sort of unit. And since we have kept this mountain valley pair here, we can actually turn this into another level shifter um, really easily. It's not like a full level shifter, so you can kind of just Crease it wherever it lies flat, like here, um, just so that it becomes two units wide. Um, and I'm not going to show the exact structure for that because there's like eight different ways it can go, but this is generally what you're going for, is that way it turns into two units wide here and here, and then the layers are fairly evenly distributed. There's a little bit more layers on the outside, but that's okay as it'll provide some thickness um, to our legs so they're not just like paper thin when we shape it. All right, so that's the first step uh, to shaping and then we're going to get into some details. All right, so we're going to start off with the knee pad. And normally what I do is, um, at least for the second leg, I base the proportions off the first leg I do. However, say for instance, this is the first leg you do. Um, this is just, you're gonna have to study a little bit on human anatomy, on how big a thigh relative to the knee and the, you know, uh, calf is. Um, but generally you can count up from the spread squash, one, two, three, four um, grid units. And then you're gonna go up half of a grid unit and you're gonna make a mountain fold right there. So we're splitting the grid unit in half. And then we're going to valley up to the 
grid line. So it's going to be like a quarter of the grid units. So just like that. So it's a very small crimp. That way we don't make our leg too short. Just like that. And then um, we're going to go down one, technically one unit to the half and kind of do the same thing, um, but on the bottom half of this unit, just like that. I'm gonna flip it this way, it's a little bit easier to fold. And again, you're just gonna line it up to make sure you're pretty much the same with the other side. Um, so these are very small crimps. You just want them to be straight. I made this one a little bit less precise, but fold it down just like so. And then normally to help lock them down, I just kind of fold both layers along the middle seam like this and just tap that a couple times and it helps the paper to stay put for now. Um, we're going to do some changes later. Um, but the other thing I like to do is I like to flip it to this side and we just use either some swivel folds or just simple valley folds to crimp. Um, I like to do swivels on the top half and just valleys on the bottom half. Um, and you know, it's not super technical. You've probably seen this in diagrams before, but just a simple swivel fold. And this also helps us generate a thigh kind of shape coming out of the um, knee pad so that it looks like the knee pad is sitting on top of the leg. It's got a little bit of dimension. It's not all just one line. And then for the bottom part, again, I just kind of valley fold. Not in, I don't like to swivel this one because normally if I swivel it, then the calf looks weird. And we have a little detail that we'll show in a minute of why we don't want that. However, you can kind of, this part is very much up to you, um, but I'm just going to show how I like to shape it. Um, so that kind of locks that pleat into place. And so now the next part is this top of our greave, I think they call it. Um, and how this is formed is you're going to want to think about a third up from this grid unit. So this is the second grid unit up. And you're going to do a valley or a mountain fold diagonally from the corner here to that third. And again, you can eyeball it. It's not perfect um you know reference points but generally speaking that's what it is and you just want to mountain fold that and you can already see it kind of forms a y down the middle and you notice from here we keep that middle line as part of the detail and now from here we're just going to make crimps along the y to kind of bring it up and they're not flat folding crimps but you can kind of just uh, generate valley folds by folding up along your mountains and it makes this uh, 3d kind of shape like this and I really like this because it, it kind of makes it look like there's a joint and then when you shape the knee more and put it into different positions it'll it'll help um, uh, keep the illusion that you know there's there's some kind of mesh um, with the armor there um, so that's just a small little detail I like to do um, and then we can get into the foot. So depending on your paper and the proportion on what you did, the foot is like your safe or your saving unit where like if you made the leg too short, then you do a smaller foot. If you made the leg too long, then you can shorten the foot. Um, it's kind of like your measuring tool, I guess. Um, so in this case, things are looking pretty good. So I'm just going to match um, the foot to the other side and normally what I do is about halfway up this diagonal line or where the crease is I'll do a valley fold um, and it's not quite on the grid units is like just a little bit off but again this is purely eyeballing um, the proportions to make sure it's accurate maybe I'll go a little bit higher like that and then what I'm going to do is, this is kind of the crimp technique I like to do. I'll try to break it down, but you're gonna do the same mountain folds of a V. 
So it's like we're doing the step in reverse. We did the mountain, or we did the valley fold first, and then we're going to make a Y on the bottom. And that allows you to do a crimp um, like that. And when we start to fold in half, you can see that that's our foot placement. It makes it a 90 degrees. So yeah, it's not gonna lie flat. And here you can adjust depending on how angled you want your foot. Maybe it's super flexed, maybe it's less flexed, uh, but it's all adjustable for when you do your final pose. Uh, but that's generally it. And then you can lock it down just by doing some mountain folds along it. And now you can kind of see this detail right here. And actually you can notice we're off a little bit on our proportions. So this calf is a little bit shorter than this one. Um, so I'm just going to fix that a little bit by making this crimp a little bit lower. And then redoing it like that. There you go. And that gets us a little bit closer to um, our other leg. Still not perfect, perfect, but it's okay. It's as long as it's roughly uh, within the same kind of frame, you should be good to go. All right, so now what we're going to do is this small detail right here. And it's just a sequence of valleys going from the point and doing like a little curve to the other point. So it's the valley. Um, there's not much I can really say about this besides, you know, just it's uh, a valley that doesn't quite lie flat and it's curved. Um, so feel free to just eyeball it, see the proportions. If it's too deep, then fix it. If it's off-centered, then, you know, it's a pretty easy fix. But I basically just use my the curve of my thumbnail to kind of generate this valley fold. And voila, there we go. Little detail, little 3D details right there. And then I like to pinch the corners on the bottom of the foot. And wherever that lies, we can lock those curves into place by just valley folding the bottom of the foot like this, or mountain folding, I guess. And then we can actually, I don't do it straight, I do it at a slight angle so it slims out the toe portion of the foot and creates a shoe. So I'll show you what that looks like really quick. Just like this. I know I'm going pretty fast, but again, a lot of this I want to leave up to you guys to see how you like to shape this. Um, just giving some reference guidelines on some of the shaping, so just like that, like that. And then finally, this foot's a little long because we accidentally made the calf a little short. So I just kind of valley fold down the point if you need to, like this, just to shorten the foot or you can reshape the foot however you want. But when I value it like this, then it provides a little thickness at the toe that I can kind of curve my foot. And that way the foot doesn't look super flat either. Um, so let me see if you guys can see that. That. I'm gonna zoom up for you guys. You guys can see. Um, so even here you can tell that one is longer than the other. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the way I crimped it. This one I crimped a little bit more than this side. Um, so really just play around with your proportions. If you don't think it's gonna matter because you're gonna pose it differently, then even with a great difference like mine, you can kind of work around it. Um, but yeah. And then from here, just work on curving your leg so that it holds form. And then I like to add this little detail here where I just, I do the opposite of the calf. And this kind of just highlights um, that calf detail is I just indent the edges a little bit and that helps make the illusion that it's curved. Or I guess it actually is curved, it's not really an illusion, but it just adds some depth to the knee um, and it's just this very slight uh, detail to the texture, just like that. And that is our legs. Um, boom. So from there, you can kind of do 
add whatever shaping you'd like. Um, in post, I'll probably shorten this foot a little bit to match this leg size just a little bit more. And we're good to go. So last thing to mention about the legs is now that we have this done, pretty much the bottom half of the model is all done. And we have our battle skirt. And you might be wondering, boys, how do I use the battle dress and connect it to the legs? Um, so we'll mention that a little bit later in the final um, shaping and details section. But essentially, you're going to want to start to just use some mountain folds and valley folds to curl the battle dress around. And ultimately, it's going to lock between some of the layers in the leg um, or on top on the dress like this. And once we finish like the chest plate, it's kind of going to sit like this. And this is all 3D shaping. Um, so there's some tips and tricks to get this paper to stay like that, um, which I'll mention. Um, some of them use methyl cellulose or glue, or um, you can just, there's different little techniques you can do to get the paper like this um, without that. Uh, but we're gonna talk all about that later. That's not the discussion for now. Um, but in case you're wondering, that's, that's kind of what happens with those structures. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Thanks guys for following along. Hopefully the legs made sense. Um, and yeah, see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now. I'm